I've had the Rogue Echo bike now for about six months, and after spending plenty of time on it, I'm finally ready to share my thoughts. So this video is going to be an unbiased, entirely honest review of this bike, and I've also included timestamps down in the description, so feel free to jump around if there's a particular aspect of this bike that interests you. So I'm going to start out with why I decided to purchase this bike in the first place. So I actually did quite a bit of research before I finally bought the Rogue Echo bike. I was kind of looking for the perfect cardio machine for my tiny little home gym here because my only cardio solution before this bike was just running outside, which is great when the weather's nice and everything, but I live up here in Canada and it can go all the way down to like minus 30 degrees Celsius and it could be icy and sometimes it's just dangerous to run outside. So I wanted something that I could use in the winter time as well. So after doing all my research, I ultimately ended up on three different options to choose from. The first was the Rogue Echo bike itself. The second was another bike called the Bike Erg from the same company from Rogue. And it's similar to the Echo bike, but instead of having these moving handlebars, it had like stationary handlebars, like a regular bicycle. And then the other option was a Trueform Trainer treadmill, which was a much more expensive option, but it was also something that I was interested in. From the research that I did, I knew that all three options had excellent build quality and would last me a really long time. And I really liked their simple designs that required no electricity and almost no maintenance as well. But the bike erg with the stationary handlebars was just like really similar to riding a road bike. And I'm actually thinking about buying a road bike in the future. And I could just put that on a indoor trainer and that would kind of render the bike erg like obsolete. So I wanted something that was a little bit different than just a bike on a trainer. And also with the Trueform Trainer treadmill, it's very similar to running outdoors, but it's running indoors, which is great for like the winter time and such. And I might still end up getting it in the future, but if I do suffer some sort of running injury, then I won't be able to do any cardio exercise. So I like that the, the Rogue Echo bike can kind of like help me work around different running injuries and still get some cardio exercise in as well. And the other thing to consider was the Rogue Echo bike was the cheapest of all three of those options. But I also just think it was like kind of the most versatile option, especially for the first piece of cardio equipment that I wanted for my tiny little home gym here. But there were some other things that kind of sold me on the Rogue Echo bike, and I'll just kind of list them off quickly here as well. So one of the big things that sold me on the Rogue Echo bike was the ability to do both long steady cardio sessions but also to do high intensity interval training on the bike as well and so i just really like to be able to have that kind of versatility especially in the first piece of cardio equipment for my home gym and i also really like that you don't actually have to use the handlebars when you're working out you can do just the legs which is usually what i do for long steady workouts and this frees up my hands to be able to read while working out which was something that was really important to me when I was shopping for my first piece of cardio equipment, is just be able to read while I'm working out, and this one fits the bill perfectly, and you can do it so comfortably. So yeah, I really liked that. And then another thing that sold me on this, especially versus like other air bikes on the market, was the fact that it's like a belt-driven system, so that's quieter, but it also requires no maintenance. So other air bikes on the market will use like a chain drive system, which is similar to like a regular bicycle, and those require maintenance and they can break more often and such. So just the fact that this was belt driven uh, made it that much more reliable and made me more confident uh, to buy it. And I also liked that in the off chance that I didn't like this bike, I'd be able to resell it super easy and not take that much of a loss because these things hold their value super well on the, uh, like in the aftermarket. And so if I wanna get rid of it, which I don't think I'm going to, um, but if I did, I would be able to get rid of it really fast and not take that much of a financial loss on it as well. So those were all the reasons why I decided to go with the Rogue Echo bike. And now I'll get into the purchasing experience and what it was like to actually buy it. I bought the Echo bike back in June of 2021. And at the time, the price was $12.25 Canadian. And after I got all the accessories, which I'll talk about later, the total with tax came to just under $1,500 Canadian. And that included shipping, which was actually super cool because it's not very common to get free shipping on items that are like this big and this heavy, especially where I live. I live more in like a rural area, kind of like outside the cities in Canada. And so to have it shipped all the way up here for free was actually like super, super nice. 
But other than that, the purchasing experience was pretty standard. Like I knew what I wanted, just went on the website and I bought it. And there was a slight delay in shipping, which I'm not sure if it had to do with the pandemic or something, but I don't remember it being like super major. It was only like a week or two. And then it finally did arrive. So now I'm gonna go into kind of like what the assembly experience was like once it did arrive. So the Rogue Echo Bike comes in this giant rectangular box that's like super heavy. And the delivery company was only supposed to deliver it to the curb, but the guys were nice enough to bring it up to, to my door there. And I actually live on the second floor, so I gotta bring it up a flight of stairs. So I decided to like open the box up at the bottom of the stairs and like take out a lot of the parts. And then I had someone help me like carry like the, the main portion of it up the stairs. Uh, just cause like it's, it's super heavy. So if you guys don't live on the first floor, just keep that in mind. You're gonna need someone to help you uh, bring it up. But uh, yeah, I got it all up and assembled and everything. And the instructions that come with it are pretty good. They're like pretty straightforward. Um, and I didn't have any like super major issues assembling it. Um, aside from what other people have commented on, which is like attaching these arms and making sure they don't like wobble and stuff, you really need to tighten uh, the bolts there. And they only give you like this short Allen key to do it with. So uh, yeah, but other than that, that issue, which uh, wasn't too bad for me, I did have a different issue with these arms, which was I installed them backwards. So I put like this one over here and the, the right one on the left side. And so instead of bending this way, they bent the other way. And I used that like that for probably like a couple of months <laughs> before I realized they were on backwards. And I was looking at a video of myself and I'm like, why am I so like stretched far forward? And when I was watching other people's videos, I finally realized I'm like, oh, I got the, the arms on backwards. So it was kind of embarrassing, but once I, once I fixed it, it, it works a lot better. So yeah, once I did get it all assembled though, there was a couple issues that I did have, which I'll go into detail about right now. So there was a couple issues that I had with the bike once I got it assembled. And the first had to do with this left arm and it kind of still, when it's in the center position, I can kind of like wobble it back and forth uh, this way. And it just, it kind of sucks. Like Rogue tells you like to try to like tighten it as much as possible, but I was tightening it like until the metal was like deforming at the bottom. So I think it's a tolerance issue with the axle on my unit um, because when I had the other arm on there, when I put them on backwards, it was still had that issue on that particular side. So I don't think it's the actual arm itself as much as it is the axle, but it doesn't seem to be like a huge issue and uh, I don't think it'll get worse with time. So I've kind of just left it and forgotten about it. Like you don't feel it when you're exercising or anything like that. Um, but I did want to make you guys aware uh, that I did have that issue. And the other issue I had was between the pedals. Uh, there was like a creaking noise and I think I, I think I have a video I could put up of it. But it went away with time. So I think it might've been like a lubrication issue or something and as I started using it, uh, it became more lubricated and stopped that creaking. And then the other thing is probably the most annoying issue that I have with this is this squeaky seat. The seat like squeaks and it's really annoying, especially like when it doesn't go away. So sometimes you're just like, it'll squeak for a little bit when you get on and it'll go away as you work out. But sometimes it squeaks like your whole workout and it's really annoying. And I find if you try to like tighten the knobs as much as possible, it helps a little bit. Or if you try to like move around on your seat, if you find like one uh, area squeaks or whatever, but it's definitely a squeaky seat. So I would say those are like kind of like all the issues that I had with this bike uh, since I assembled it. But now we'll go into like the build quality and talk a little bit um, about the overall build quality of the bike. I would say that the build quality of this bike is top notch. It's just really well put together and it feels super solid when you're on it. Um, and even like when you're off it, it's just kind of like a really heavy solid unit and it's mostly made out of like steel, which is contributes to the weight. And there is a few plastic components, like the housing around the pedals is plastic, uh, but these aren't like any load bearing structures or anything like that. Um, so yeah, overall it's just like super solid and I was definitely impressed with the build quality. And even though the seat does squeak, um, the adjustments are actually really nice in the seat. So you can move it up and down and forward and back, which is really convenient for me because I'm six foot four and then my girlfriend's like a foot shorter. Um, so we can adjust the seat uh, to the point at which both of us would be able to use it. And it only takes like a, a few seconds to adjust the seat, which is uh, really, really nice. One thing I will say about the seat is I find it sometimes a little bit farther back than like a traditional bicycle. Um, so sometimes I like to move it even more forward, uh, but you can't, but I haven't noticed any like hip issues or anything like that. Um, I just wish it was like a little bit uh, more straight above the pedals versus uh, a little bit more back. But yeah, overall the build quality is really amazing. And so I'll go in now and talk a little bit about the monitor. 
So the bike comes with a very simple, easy to use monitor. And I only kind of use it for like distance and tracking like my energy, like it has like a watt meter that shows you how many watts uh, you're using on the bike. And then I do like my heart rate and even like my time on my Apple Watch for my workouts. Um, I haven't gone too deep into the monitor. Like when I'm doing my steady workouts, I just start pedaling and it turns on and it'll tell me the distance and the wattage by itself. Um, but I did set up a custom setting for high intensity interval training. And I had to refer to like the console guide they gave you and the instructions to do that. But now that it's set up, whenever I do my interval training, I just hit custom and start and then it'll just like go for me there. So yeah, I'm probably not the guy to go to if you're like super into this monitor and you want to know all its custom settings and setting up your heart rate through it and everything like that. I just kind of use it like in a very basic way. And that's kind of what I wanted. Like I'm not a super big fan of like these like complicated monitors and syncing with everything. Um, so I was, the simplicity of it did kind of appeal to me. And it doesn't like, uh, it works off electricity, but it's like batteries. So you just like uh, put the batteries in the back of the console, uh, which is nice because you have like, you don't have any like exposed wires or anything like that. But overall, I'm really happy with the monitor. It does everything I need it to do and uh, it's simple, which is nice. So next I'll go into talking about the accessories that I bought with the Echo Bike. So when I bought this bike, I did buy all the available accessories, which is the wind guard, the phone holder, and the water bottle holder. And I'll start out talking about the wind guard because I do think it's kind of like the most essential accessory. This bike, when you're on it, it creates like a lot of wind, even when you have the wind guard on it. So when you don't have it on it, it's just kind of like rushing up in your face the whole time. And it's kind of annoying. So I definitely say if you are going to get this bike, the uh, wind guard is definitely a must. And the phone holder, it's pretty good. Like I just have like a small little phone and it holds it just fine. And it's also like um, suitable for like larger phones but it does do it in like portrait mode so if you want to like turn it landscape and watch a movie like you can't really which kind of sucks but um, I, I usually use it as a book holder actually which works pretty good um, and uh, I can even have like my phone on there and then like I can put the book on top of it so like when I'm reading on the bike and I want to take a break for some water I can like set the book down on the uh, on the phone holder there and uh, the last thing is the water bottle holder which is like designed for like plastic regular water bottles which i'm not sure anybody uses those but even like my small yeti water bottle here it um it like kind of doesn't really fit in the water bottle holder too well so it's definitely probably like the worst accessory it just does not work very well um but i still use it with the yeti and it's better that uh like i'm grateful i have it versus not having it so yeah that kind of just covers the accessories and next I'll kind of go into like the ride experience, like what it's like to use the Echo Bike. So I did want to talk a little bit about the ride experience on this bike, just so that you know what you're getting yourself into if you decide to get one of these. And overall, I have to say it's very good. The bike is super stable and you're not really going to notice any movement unless you're going like really hard on it. Uh, but I do find it's really comfortable for like long steady rides and also doing like high intensity interval training. I'm never really like uncomfortable on the bike, which is a nice thing. But something to keep in mind is that it is an air bike. So that giant fan on the front is going to like, that makes all like your air resistance is going to produce a lot of like movement in the air around the room. And so this can be a good thing, especially in the summertime when it's like really hot and it's just kind of like a cooling, nice breeze all the time when you're on the bike. Um, but if you live in a place that's like really dusty, it can stir up like all the dust in the room and then you're kind of like breathing that in at the same time. So that's kind of annoying. Um, I do try to help with this because I have like a HEPA air filter that I put in the in my little gym area uh, when I am on the Echo Bike and I turn that on and it helps like filter out some of the dust in the room just so I'm not breathing in as much of it. But it is something to keep in mind and um, yeah, I just wanted to, to bring that up just so you can know what to expect. And I guess another thing that I kind of am not a huge fan about with the, the ride experience is that you have to wear shoes when you're on this bike. Uh, the pedals that come with it kind of have like this like uh, things that stick out of them. And so it's kind of uncomfortable if you're like on there barefoot. And I did try to buy barefoot pedals and, and use them, uh, but they're, they're like just plastic. And when your feet got sweaty, they like slip off them and it like was uncomfortable. And they had like straps and you could try to put your barefoot in the strap, but like you're kind of like stuck in there. So it just wasn't great. Like kind of the best solution I found is like you just got to wear shoes on it, which is kind of annoying, especially for home gyms. Like I like to work out like in my bare feet and um, it would be nice to just like hop on with your bare feet and do like some interval training while you're doing your strength training and such. But 
it's not the case, so you gotta wear shoes with these pedals and it's just kinda the way it is. And I guess the only other thing I'll say about the ride experience is you do have to be pretty mindful, like your feet aren't clipped in, like a, like a clip-in bike or anything like that. Um, so you just gotta be mindful of like your pedaling motion, make sure your knees don't go in too much or your feet don't slip off the pedals. Cause I did get injured one time uh, when I was tired, like at the end of a workout, my foot slept off and uh, the side of my ankle uh, caught on the bike and actually like cut, cut the skin open um, and bled a little bit. So that's something to keep in mind is you just gotta be like aware when you're working out and just, just be careful. But uh, yeah, aside from those little things, overall the ride experience is like really good and I think it's probably the best you're gonna get in terms of like air bikes. So now we'll go into talking a little bit about the warranty and the customer service experience. Okay, so the Echo Bike does come with a two year warranty on the parts. So that means that the labor and like fixing the bike, if anything goes wrong with it, is on you. Only Rogue within those two years will send you the parts that you need to fix it, uh, but you have to like do all the labor and such. So with the issues that I had, I did have some email correspondence with Rogue and they seemed pretty good. Like they would reply within like 24 hours and such um, for the issues that I had, but I ended up just like stop replying for like the one issue uh, just because it wasn't like that big of a deal to me. And since the other one went away, uh, like I, I stopped replying to them for that as well. Um, but I would say, and I don't want to like talk smack to the people at Rogue, I'm sure they're really nice people, but they just like don't really go like above and beyond um, to provide like a good customer experience. Like when I bought the bike, like the day I got it, I set it all up and then um, I got an email uh, for like a promotional offer on the Rogue Echo bike for like $100 off. And I'm like, oh man, like I just bought it, just set it all up. I had these issues with it, so it like wasn't super positive to begin with. Um, but then I like emailed them like, yo, can I get like the hundred bucks on this like discount or whatever? And they said they only honor it for like up to five days and everything. So I was kind of, I was kind of bummed out about that. I just thought it was like an opportunity for them to, uh, I don't know, like have like exceptional customer service. Like if they sent me the hundred bucks, I'd be like really happy. Right. Uh, but they didn't. And then something else that irked me about their customer service was when I was buying the barefoot pedals for this bike, I didn't know what the thread size was. Like it's not in the manual or uh, on the website or anything like that. So I just like, oh, I'll just email them and ask them like, hey, what's the thread size of these pedals? Uh, Cause I'm looking to buy some like barefoot pedals or whatever. And they wouldn't tell me, they're just <laughs> they're like, we don't have that like on hand, sorry. Uh, but you can buy these other pedals that we have on our website, which are like clip-in pedals. And I'm like, like, just tell me the thread size. Like you guys make the freaking bike. Um, but anyways, I took this, I took the pedals that were on their website and I had to like go look on other websites to find their thread size before I finally was able to find like what thread size of the barefoot pedals to buy. Cause pedals come in two sizes and they're like super similar and I don't have like a measuring device to measure the thread size. So that just kind of irked me. It's like, just, just tell me what the pedal size is. It's like a simple customer service thing. But anyways, like overall, I won't talk too much more smack about their customer <laughs> service. I'm sure they're really nice people and uh, they make a fantastic product. And so uh, yeah, now I'll just like kind of go into like my final thoughts. So overall, I am super happy that I ended up going with the Rogue Echo Bike. I do think it's a really great piece of cardio equipment for your home gym. At least it has been for mine. And I just like the versatility that it offers in like the steady workouts as well as like the high intensity workouts. And it was also a super nice compliment to my running. So this past year when I was doing my journey to 10 kilometers, I did experience a couple injuries uh, throughout the training and I was able to actually use the Echo Bike to keep up with my cardiovascular health and actually finish my journey to 10K as well. So and I, got, I got this thing to thank for that. And luckily the issues that I had with it have been like really minor. I think anytime you buy like a big piece of exercise equipment like this, uh, it is likely that you're gonna have some issues. So I am grateful that the issues I've had have been relatively minor and I've still been able to use it, everything like that. Um, so yeah, I do think it's a really good product. I did put a link to buy it in the description, but it is just a regular link. I don't have any affiliation with Rogue or anything like that, which I think is kind of nice because the review is like unbiased and like honest and I can just say whatever I want to say, right? So yeah, I'm actually also curious about what you guys thought about this like product review type video. Um, I've never done anything like this on the channel before, but I thought it would be cool to like review products that support my self-improvement journey such as this one, as like you guys might find them interesting as well. And since the name of the channel is Entirely Honest, I could do like entirely honest reviews and like uh, just share my completely honest thoughts and not get like compensated or have to like 
only talk about the good things because that's like what the company wants you to do or whatever, right? So yeah, let me know what you think about this type of product review video down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. And if you're new to the channel, definitely check out some other videos I have. I make a new video about self-improvement every single week. So if you haven't yet, please subscribe and I'll see you all next week. Thanks so much and take care. Peace.